Hi guys, it's me again, Alex, and today is Monday. I am hoping to see uh, lots of my students today because we will be discussing topic which is very confusing for most of you. Well, bulk produce, how to calculate, how to charge per bag, per thousand. So hopefully I'm going to see some questions. And I just wanted to take a few seconds before I will see all of you guys joining my life on YouTube, or on Facebook. And please share to other groups. I would appreciate it because as all of you know, I am on a mission together with you to change tracking for better. What's new going on in this patch training center? Well, we started our uh, Saturday dispatch class. We have 39 students. And I was very pleased with the attitude, with the integrity of each of my students. I was impressed how they really want to learn this industry. I sent a quiz and the responses were coming back the next day. They have to study for the next class. They have to put a lots of effort. But I mean, for me as a teacher, it's, it's so much joy to see that they are learning, that they are all motivated. And even today, they are going to start watching this to make sure that they have extra knowledge on some logistics uh, topics. I see my friends. Here you go. Hello, Alex. So happy to be here. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you, Jose. He's one of my students who signed up for mentorship for a year. His wife signed up for safety already because he wants to succeed. And I'm here to help him. I see Carol. Carol never misses. And I appreciate that because Carol is on a mission together with me to change tracking. Uh, hello from Washington. We have Olga. Hi, Olga. We have Crystal, another superstar from my classes. We are on the road to change trucking. So a few more minutes before we start, because I really want people not to miss the beginning. So thank you guys for being here. Make sure you stop me. I know this is live, so I cannot really hear you. I will be monitoring the comments. We're going to be talking about bulk um, produce. So what can be bulk? So let's see first. Well, potatoes, can they be bulk? Yes, they can be bulk. What does it mean bulk? It means not palletized. For people who are not really in trucking industry or for the new dispatcher, palletized means that pro a product is on pallets. It can be wrapped. It can be in bags. So it's easy for loading, unloading. So usually you have to ask the questions. Let's go from the first question. What time is the pickup? When is the delivery? All my students know that without knowing the transit, you cannot keep talking about negotiation. The second question, what is a commodity? Well, you know the commodity. Let's say this is potatoes, right? When you hear produce like potatoes, carrots, onions, you're gonna ask the question. Is it palletized or is it bulk or floor loaded? Well, if they're going to tell you palletized, no worries about anything. It's going to be palletized, easy loading, easy unloading, good to go. So the only thing you need to negotiate, the rate, right? And how are you going to negotiate the rate? You're going to see what the market have been paying for the last 15 days for this lane. You're going to see trend lines for the last month right? You're going to see what kind of trailer are they using because it can go on a flatbed, right? Can it go on a flatbed? Kind of, yes, it can go if it's palletized and they tarp it, but usually in flatbed, no, it's going to be in the bags. In driving, can it go palletized? Yes. In a reefer? Yes, it can be palletized. So let's start. So Broker is telling you, well, Carol, this is going to be floor loaded bulk potato. And now he's asking you, Carol, how much do you want to be paid per bag, 
per thousand on the way. How much? So we're gonna figure this out because usually I have this exercise in my quiz and students still get confused how to calculate this. So let's see. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go slow. So if any of you are not understanding, please make sure you write comments. Alex, please repeat. So I will repeat. Here you go. Our bulk potatoes. Look at that. I have a flatbed. See, those are in bags. What is this? This is probably dry van or reefer at delivery. Do you see the trailer? They are going to put it on a special machine. They're going to unhook from your trailer. They're going to flip it. And you're going to be waiting for production. We're going to talk about that production because sometimes it's not a good thing to deliver to production. All of us are liking the chips, right? But you don't really want to be a driver delivering bulk potatoes to the chip production facility. And I will tell you why. So let's continue. Again, what is a bulk load? Usually those are large amounts, right? It can be liquid or it can be dry freight or bulk. And they are using conveyor or walking floors to unload. Most of the time, they are using the different trailers, which they call hopper bottom or pneumatic trailers. For well, my girls, I know sometimes those words are so hard and you try to picture how it looks. Here you go, girls. That's how it looks. So this is a hopper bottom trailer. And the next one is going to be fumatic trailer. So this is a type of equipment which usually people use when they are dealing with a bulk freight. But we are here not going to be this talking about those specialty trailers. Those are specialty trailers. And believe it or not, you will be surprised that they cost lots and lots of money. They go from 110000 to 140000 So if you compare with a dry van, dry van usually from thirty five to 40000 Of course, nowadays, the prices went up, right? Uh, we have shortage of the trucks. The used trucks went up in the prices. Trailers went up in the prices because of what? Of the cost of aluminum and because of the shortage. How much does reefer cost? Well, the good reefer goes from 68000 to sixty five. If you are using logistics reefer, for girls who already took my class, they already know that the reefers which have bulk hats installed, those can go up to 100000 110000 but today we're talking about regular flatbed. It's going to be 48, uh, 48 feet or 53 feet. We're talking about dry van, vented van, vented or heated, because when you're dealing with the produce, it cannot be just enclosed dry van. Why? Very simple. All my girls are very smart. They know that we need to make sure in summer we need the air going on so the produce even potatoes or carrots they can spoil especially if you're going all the way from idaho and you go all the way to east coast in the winter we're gonna use heaters but remember remember winters in wyoming winters in colorado do not kid yourself. Your little heater is not going to prevent your potatoes or onion, onions or carrots from getting uh, frozen. You do not want to take that produce from Idaho going to Midwest or East Coast starting in October till late April. Why? Because it's still cold. We're going to be seeing snow probably soon, probably in two, three weeks. We're already going to have a snowstorms in Wyoming or Colorado area, right? So remember, yes, you can take the produce on a dry when from April, end of April till maybe beginning of October. After that, unless you are going where? Idaho, maybe you're going towards Washington or Oregon. And you not and you watching the weather, you have to watch the weather. 
Or if you are dealing with a bulk potato somewhere in California or Arizona, or if you are dealing with a bulk potatoes in uh, Florida or warm state. So pay attention to that. Hello, Alex. Uh, Jose's why here's watching also. See, we have a family businesses. We're going to make sure that you guys succeed. So let's go back to our um, PowerPoint, right? And sometimes it's hard for me, guys, because as I told you, I have the screen, so I need to make sure I look uh, kind of away from you. So here is the thing. Here's our bulk potatoes. Right now we can see, actually, it's a potatoes here. Everybody loves French fries, right? Uh, if it's going to be French fries, can it go on a flatbed or driving? Of course not, because it's already going to be frozen. It's going to be minus 10 degrees, zero degrees. So French fries as a commodity can only go to the river. But we're talking about potatoes, 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 right? I love potatoes. I'm Ukrainian. If you, if I have to choose uh, food, which I would not give away, it would be potatoes and fresh bread. So those two things I cannot give, uh, give away ever. So I don't care what diet is there. I am not giving it up. But here's the onions, right? On a flatbed. So let's talk. Bulk of floor loaded. How are they going to pay? So they can pay by the weight. They can pay by the bag. They can pay per the thousand. But before we're going to go there, let's memorize our total weight. What is the total weight, gross legal weight, per truck, trailer, and those potatoes inside of your trailer? Well, it's federal law. It's 80 thousand pounds okay so here's the first math if we can only take eighty thousand pounds as a gross weight for truck trailer don't we need to figure out how much our truck and empty trailer weights right so we will need to do simple math so here if you guys want to write this down please make sure you do so we take 80,000 and we're going to minus empty scale ticket of truck and trailer. And whatever number we're going to get, it's going to go, it's going to be our weight of produce that we can scale. So let's stop right here. So did everybody, did everybody write this down? 80,000 legal weight. It doesn't matter if it's a reefer. It doesn't matter if it's a driver. It doesn't matter if it's a flatbed. I do not care if you're a company driver. I do not care if you're an owner operator. I do not care if you're a professional dispatcher or desperate dispatcher. The formula is still the same. 80,000 minus empty scale ticket. Here's my little advice. Empty scale ticket. You're going to ask your driver to take the truck, his trailer, he has to put the fuel tanks, they have to be full. He cannot be half empty. He cannot have the quarter of the fuel. Why? Because fuel is uh, has weight, right? Your empty scale ticket is going to be varying, right? In the winter, we still have to carry chains. Mandatory. We have to have eight sets of chains. Girls, I have some in a garage sitting from some of my drivers who are going to pick them up like probably in a week or so. Those are heavy. So eight, eight sets, that's going to have extra 300, 400 pounds. Then every truck is different, right? We're talking about what kind of truck. So we're talking about this little baby, right? So it can be what? Volvo. It can be Freightliner, it can be Peterbilt, it can be Canworth, whatever. It can be international, right? Different weight. It can be different trailer. Reefers are going to be heavier. Dry vents going to be lighter. Again, what kind of reefer? Is that Wabash? Is that Grey Dan? Whatever. Who is making them? Is that utility trailer? So combination of the truck, trailer and your driver and whatever he has in his truck 
is always going to be different. So there's formula you will calculate for each driver. So one more time, you're going to take 80,000 and you're going to minus empty scale ticket provided by your driver. In this case, I made it simple. So we have 34 and a half. Actually, that's a weight of one of my uh, trucks and trailers. So I can scale 45,500 on the weight. Okay. We have filling the house. Yes, we do, Carol. We have people from Serbia watching, right? We have other people saying hi. So is everybody still on the same page with me? Are we good to move on? Do we understand how we figure out the empty scale ticket? So we send in the truck to the weight station and they have to bring us empty scale ticket. 80,000 minus empty scale ticket. Now we know how much he can hold. Well, we figure that out, right? What would be the second step? Well, let's figure this out. How they usually gonna pay? They can have three different ways of paying for floor loaded produce or bulk produce. The best way it's flat rate. So let's say Vanessa's calling, she's negotiating load from Twin Falls, Idaho, going to Memphis, Tennessee. She checked her spot market. She checked how much they've been paying for the last uh, 15 days. She sees red lines, it depends if it's a flat a flatbed, if it's a reefer, or if it's driving. So she knows how much she needs for this trip. So she's asking, they say, we it's going to be bulk or it's going to be uh, in bags, but we are paying flat rate. In this case, she just needs to make sure she negotiates the rates, right? And we're going to go over it. Or they can tell her by hundred weight or per bag. So let's go one at the time. Flat bag. Usually rate confirmation is going to say, is going to say, well, we are paying the flat rate. Let's say we are paying $5,000, but your driver has to scale minimum of 42,000, 43,000. So what does it mean, girls and boys and guys? What does it mean in logistics? Flat rate, $5,000, right? But the minimum has to be 42 or 43,000. I'm going to give you a scenario. You're working with a smart owner operator, right? Who says, well, the rate confirmation has $5,000. Why should I kill my baby truck and my baby trailer going through the mountains? I am going to go to the farm and I'm going to just tell them to scale and put maybe $35,000. Wow, is that smart decision? Well, at the moment, seems like it's smart, right? He's going to save on the fuel. He's going to not to kill his truck. So maintenance, he's saving on the uh, tires, on everything else, right? Seems like smart. Well, what's happening? He's delivering load. And the next day, you're receiving phone call from very, very upset broker. And broker is telling you, Alex, I gave you flat $5,000. I put in a rate confirmation, the minimum weight has to be 42,000. Why would your driver take only 36,000 and he went all the way from Idaho, let's say to Pennsylvania, let's say if he went to Philadelphia, right? Why would you do that? And of course, if I am as a dispatcher, did not pay attention, if I did not listen, if I receive rate confirmation and I did not read it, or maybe I was reading it, but I did not understand what does it mean minimum weight requirements. What's going to happen? Well, two things going to happen. They going to deduct money from you. So now instead of 5,000, they're going to recalculate 
And then you're probably going to get $3,500 or maybe even $3,000. Is it fair? Well, you would think that it's not fair, but actually if I'm a broker, yes, it's fair because I pay you flat a flat rate with a minimum of $42,000. So now what do you have? You have the driver who is pissed. You have the owner operator who is pissed, or maybe it's a company driver. Company driver is not going to care because he gets paid per mile. So now you have the owner of the company who is telling you, well, Alex, do you really know what you're doing? Why didn't you pay attention to rate confirmation, to minimum weight? Are we clear on this? So flat rate, $5,000 minimum requirements what else do we have to worry about well we're talking about floor loaded potatoes we're talking about floor loaded onions maybe not as dirty floor loaded carrots right you're going to have dirt all over your trailer what do i say in my class well i always say make sure when you negotiate you also ask for reimbursement for washout of the trailer, right? So look at this. Ask for washout reimbursement, revise rate confirmation. Pay attention. If you never negotiated that, can you ask for this after you deliver the load? Because now your driver's telling you, well, Carol, I had to pay $120 in Philadelphia. I had to drive around 80 miles, 120, because on the East Coast, it's no washouts. Now he's like, Carol, you have to pay me that $120. Well, if Carol has experience or Carol went to my class, she would negotiate that before her truck went to the farm to pick up that potatoes, right? Well, are you paying for reimbursement of the washout? And usually... They're going to tell you, well, it's already included in the rate. No, it should not be included in the rate. So it's up to you to ask right there. And a lot of times they will say, yes, we're going to reimburse you with a valid washout receipt up to 80000 Up to 100 I mean $80. Sorry, oh, 80000 sounds great, right? Up to $80 up to $100, sometimes only $60 towards your washout. So what do we do as a dispatcher? Our guy delivered. He went to washout. He sends you a receipt. What do you do? You attach BOL, bill of landing, plus washout receipt, and you start writing what? Well, please, Mike, send me revised rate confirmation with washout reimbursement of $120. If they agree to pay you the full reimbursement that you're going to receive $5,120 revised rate confirmation, if they only pay in the portion that you're going to receive $80, $60. Whose job is this? Driver's job, broker's job, or dispatcher's job to negotiate? It's our job. It's our job to read rate confirmation it's our job to catch that minimum weight. It's our job to send paperwork right away. It's our job to sign a revised rate confirmation and make sure that we are invoicing for that extra money. Driver's job is to pick up on time, make sure that he scales what he has to scale, deliver on time, send us a receipt, right? So are we good? We all working as a team. Okay, once you do, hold on, once you do wash out, dry when is wet, when for a long time. So here, right now, what are you going to try to stay away from? Of course, floor loaded potatoes to your dry van, because at least reefer has a metal floors, right? So when we wash the reefer, that's easy because it can dry up the dry one is going to stay wet and you have to sweat. So right here, do you ever want to book floor loaded bulk potatoes to dry van? I don't have to answer that because Calibri Love already knows the answer, right? No, 
That's why if you hear that commodity is potatoes and they are not palletized and you have a dry van, I suggest you find a different world. You're not the desperate that you have to deal with the bulk potatoes for the dry van. You can find something different. So this is the difference between being professional dispatcher and being a desperate dispatcher. So please, let's be professionals. Well, what else? Let's keep going. Uh, hi from year one. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. It's nice to see all of you. Let's continue. So we stopped at flat rate. Are we all good on a flat rate? Just reimbursement, revise rate confirmation for washout, right? Flat rate. Let's go to the next slide. Now they are telling us that they're going to pay us per thousand on a weight. So in this case, what do we need? First, again, we will need to have that washout reimbursement, right? No matter what, how, is it flatbed or if it's per 1,000, per bag, we need to take care of it. We still need to have empty scale ticket. It will be required, so nothing changing. But now let's see how we're going to calculate how much should we charge per 1,000 on the weight for produce. So probably Crystal already, she is getting her phone out because now we're going to do calculations. So guys, I am going to put a little, little uh, video. Please, let's get calcul calculators or your phones and let's calculate in 30 seconds. Everybody has their phone. So we already figure out that maximum weight can go on our truck and trailer. It doesn't matter what type right now, 45 and a half. Of course, if it's a flatbed, you can scale up to 48,000. If it's a if it's a dry van, you can go up to 46. Reefer, usually 43 and a half, 44. It depends on what type of reefer and what truck combination you have. But we're just doing this for purposes of this uh, training. So we have 45,500 pounds we can scale. So let's figure out how many thousands we can hold. So let's do it. We're gonna take our phone, our calculator, and what are we gonna do? Well, we're going to take, what? 45,500, 45, right? We took that. This is the weight we can scale. They are paying us per thousand on a weight. We need to figure out how many thousands we can have for this truck. So we're going to divide by thousand. So here you have, you have 45 and five. For people who like math, you can just get rid of two zeros, right? And you're going to have 45 and a half. So you're going to move, you're going to move that comma up front, right? Three times because thousand has three zeros. But you know what? I am not teaching you math right now. So we have 45 and a half. So now that you know that you need to get $6,800. Let's say going from a Boise, Idaho to Columbus, Ohio. You already know because you know how many miles you know approximately how much per mile you need to get. So you have the number in your head, 68,000. Now I am the broker and I am asking Frank, Frank, how much do you want per thousand? Because what I am trying to find, I am trying to find a desperate dispatcher who does not know how to calculate that, right? So if Frank does not know how to do calculation, he can say, oh, 
Maybe I won $50 per thousand. Maybe I won $25. Or oh, maybe he's going to say 5,000, which is ridiculous. So in this case, he's going to take, Frank knows what he's doing, right? He's telling me that we are doing a professional job. Thank you, Frank. So he's going to take 6,800. That's what we need to get for the loan. This is the money we need to get. And we're going to divide by 45.5 because that's how many thousands we can put on our truck. So what are we getting? $149.45, right? Per thousand. Are we good on it? Crystal, Carol, show me. Are we good on this so we can move on? So again, if you are eight, if you will need to be, let's answer this. So if one of you guys do the calculation, if I have to be at 5,000 on a rate, how much, how much is it going to be per thousand? If I only need 5,000, who is going to give me an answer? Whoever's giving me answer first, is gonna get extra stuff from me. So if I need to be at 5,000, how much per thousand on the way do I need to get? I'm counting to three, whoever's answering. One, two, three, nobody's answering. I'm waiting one more time. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take 5,000. If we need to get 5,000, we're gonna divide by what? We're gonna divide by 45 and five. So $109.89. Good job, guys. Look at that. Here you go, 49, 49, 49, right? This is the correct answer. So what did we took? Well, we took, we took, hold on. We took five, to, oh, it doesn't let me change, hold, okay. It doesn't let me change right now. So we took 5,000 divided by 45 and five. Are we good on this? Let's say one more practice. I have to be only at 3,500. How much is it gonna be per, per thousand? Let's do it fast again. Who is gonna answer? I only need 3,500. So 35 divided by what? By 45, five equals 76, right? 76.92 per thousand. Yes? We good on this? So if you know your number, 149. Yes, good job. Good job. Uh, so now you're right. The first time, yeah, the first time you had to fix it, now you're right. So 76.92. So if you know that you need $77 per thousand, when you negotiating with me as a broker, of course, you should ask at least for $81, right? $82 per thousand. So you have negotiation room. So you calculated $77. Ask for $81.82 because no one is going to agree to you. We are in the business for negotiation, right? If you ask me 81, I'm going to say, oh, let me see what I can do. No, I cannot do 81, but I can meet you at 79. You already know that it's better than 77, so you are higher. Are you going to agree? No, that's not what I'm teaching my students. I always say, well, 79 sounds great, but my lowest dollar, bottom price, would be at 80. So you go down from the 81, but look at this. You need to be at 77. You are $3 higher. So when you really think about it, $3 higher, what would be the difference? 43.5 multiplied by $3. Wow, well, you're talking about $1,300 difference. $1,300. And I did that fast math. We're not going to do that, right? Are we all good? Thousands per weight. Still, reimbursement for washout, empty scale ticket. You need to scale. How are you going to get paid? Per bill of landing, right? You're going to get paid per bill of landing. So they're going to see how much you scale. So let's continue. What if we have rate per back? And that's 
when we have the hardest time in our class. For some people, it's very easy. Some people are struggling. So that's why I decided to do this live because I got tired of fixing this in our final test. Rate per back. So now we have Crystal's calling, calling a broker. And he's telling her, well, it's going to be floor loaded potatoes or onions or carrots, but we're going to be paying per bag. Which question should we ask? How heavy are the bags, right? And usually we have three different sizes and they can be different. But usually in industry, we have 100 pound bags, 50 pound bags and 25 pound bags, right? So what do we need to do right now, Crystal? Do we need to figure out how many bags are going to fit on our truck, which can scale 43,500 if it's 100 pound bags, 50 pound bags, or 25 pound bags? So let's do that. So now we're going to do this math. How many bags will go on the truck that can scale 43,500, right? Trying to put the light on. So if we have 100 pound bags, what are we going to do? We're going to take our total weight we can scale and we're going to divide by 100. So look at this. This is very simple right here. It's going to be 43,500 divided by 100 pound bags. How many bags can go on the truck? 435. We're going to do the same if it's 50 pound bags. But instead of dividing by 100, we're going to divide by 50. So it's going to be more bags, right? Because they are lighter. So the amount of bags is going to be higher. So again, 43,500 divided by 50. So it's going to be 870 bags, which weight 50 pounds can go on this truck. What if it's a 25 pounds bag? Well, we're going to take 43,500 and we're going to divide by 25. So it's going to be 1,740 bags. Are we clear on this? Some, some um, of you who is watching, can you just give me thumbs up? Are we good on that? How we got how many bags? One more time, I'm going to show you. So we're going to take total weight and we're going to divide. How are you going to know? Because you're going to ask broker, how heavy bags? What weight are we talking? Is that 100 pound bags? Is that 50 pounds back? Is it 25 pound bags? So you got it? Any of you? Come on, Crystal, Vanessa, Starsh, tell me. Are we good on this? Can we move on to the second part? How much we're going to ask per bag? So any, any thumbs up? Again, total weight divided by 100. It's going to be 435 bags if they are weighing 100 pounds. 43,500 divided by 50, it's going to be 870 bags if they weighed 50 pounds. 43,500 divided by 25 pounds, it's going to be 1740. Thank you, Jose. We're good to go. If Jose is good to go, Crystal good to go, we're going to move on. So now let's figure out how much per bag. So I made this for you so it's easier. We already know how many bags. We already know how much we need for this lane, right? Because we look at the rate, we look at the miles. We know that minimum we need to be at 6,800. So broker is asking you, well, Vanessa, how much would you like me to pay per bag? So let's talk about 100 pound bag. So what Vanessa going to do? What Crystal going to do? What uh, Carol going to do? They're going to take 6,800. And they're going to divide by 435 bags. So here's the price, $15.63 per bag, right? 
And again, your driver has to scale the full weight because if he's going to go and he's going to say, well, Carol negotiated, and if he's going to only take 400 bags, then his rate is not going to be 6,800. Uh, 6, what is his rate going to be? 1563 uh, multiply by 400 bags. So it's going to be 6252. See the difference? Minus 68. We're talking about $500, $540 difference if he is not going to take 435 bags. Again, how are they going to watch this? They're going to look at bill of lading because the shipper is going to say he took 400 bags. He took 435 bags. What happens if he took more? Then they're going to add. Because if you took 440 bags, five, uh, five bags more, you're going to multiply what? Uh, five bags by $15. If you took 20 bags more, if you can scale, legal scale, right? Are we good on it? Aliyah, are we good? Alpha, are we good on it? So we figure out if it's 100 pound bags, it's $15, $15.63. Again, if Aliyah is going to negotiate, she knows she has to be at $16. Is she going to tell him right away? You know, I really do like to be at $15.63. Of course not, because she went through my class. She's going to ask for 18, 17, and she's going to get at least to 16 and a half, 17, right? But she cannot go lower than $15.63. So that's already talking about negotiation. What are we going to do now if we have 50 pound bags? Same. We're going to take 6,800. And we're going to divide by the total bags, right? Which can go on our truck and trailer if they are 50 pounds. We already figured it out. So we're going to take 6,800, divide by 870. So it's going to be $7.81. What are we going to do if it's 25 pound bags? Same. 68 divide by 1740. If you're going to take more, then they're going to add. If you're going to take less, then they're going to deduct. So in both cases, we are talking about what? We are talking about revised rate confirmation, right? Here is another tips from me. As many of you know, I've been doing it for a while. Again, if you hear that this is potatoes, this is onions, this is carrots, if it's palletized, don't worry about it. That means it's going to be fast loading, unloading. When you hear that it's bulk produce, well, you pretty much have to be pretty desperate to deal with it because no drivers like to sit unloading, unloading. No driver deserves to drive around, especially if it's on the East Coast or it's somewhere in the middle of nowhere where it's no washout looking to wash out the trailer, what it, what's going to happen? You're going to lose your time. That when he's going to deliver first, I can tell you this. Remember that picture? Let me go back to that picture in the beginning where you saw that how they unload it, right? So let's see. See that little picture? They take your trailer. They flip it first. Lots of drivers. They do not want damage to their trailers. But what else is happening? Usually, you're not going to have set delivery. The broker is going to pay you extra money and you're going to get excited. Well, look, for just cabbage, they are paying $3,000. But for the bulk potatoes, they are paying $3,800. Why, guys? It's always a catch. Because you're going to go to production, right? What does it mean, production? That's when they make the chips, for example. So your driver, it's first come, first serve, and the broker is going to tell you, you can deliver any time. After you get loaded, we're going to contact the processing facility, and they're going to give you appointment, first come, first serve, 24 hours. Well, guys, this is a lie. I tried it so many times until I said, never in my life I'm going to be dealing with a bulk produce because 
Your driver comes. He has another 15, 20 trucks in front of him. They all waiting for production. He sometimes sit there for 24 hours, 48 hours. Even if he gets lucky and they're going to take him in eight hours, they took his trailer and something happens on production lane. And what can you do? Nothing. Your trailer still there waiting to get unloaded, right? Why did we do this little training? Well, you professionals. You need to know everything in logistics, right? So now you know what does it mean. Bulk potatoes, floor-loaded potatoes. My personal advice, stay away. You can find better loads. You can take palletized potatoes, right? If you have flatbed, well, you can take the bag of uh, potatoes, onion, carrots, and you still have to ask what question. Does it have to be tarped, right? It has to be tarped. If you are dealing with a wanted van, what do you need to worry about? Weather, right? You need to make sure that you are not going to freeze those uh, carrots or onions and everything else. Just because you're picking up in Idaho and you're going all the way to Miami and you think about it, well, Miami is nice and warm. Idaho still good because it's a valley. Don't forget, you need to go through other states like Colorado, like uh, Wyoming, right? So what's going to happen? Claim. So what are you doing? If you are dispatcher, you actually killing somebody's company with your own hands. So again, by the end of the day, I want you to learn how to calculate that. What does it mean? Because maybe, guys, maybe you guys are going to be working with those specialty trailers, right? I had a student, Kalila, remember Kalila? So she was working with the hover bottom uh, trailers, right? So this is totally different negotiation. Those are specialized trailers. You don't have to worry about all that. And actually, usually this is a flat rate or it goes per weight, whatever they can scale. So anyway, guys, any questions so far? I think we covered everything else. I think it's a first life which went so fast because it's not much to cover. Reimbursement for washout, empty scale ticket, total weight 80,000. If you have any questions, I can answer them now. If not, let me tell you what's going on while we starting our freight brokerage on Sunday. We starting our class. What else is going on? Our October class for dispatch will be starting on October 31st. Please, again, do not wait till the last minute because my class is filling out really fast. Well, I think we already have like 15 people. Uh, tomorrow we have mentoring ship, right? Again, if you took my classes or you right now in my class, you can sign up mentorship only for my students because i know that they have solid foundation i know how i have to push you guys so this is the extra extra knowledge i will be giving to my shining stars yes carol says it's a wine time yes carol wine time is going to be tomorrow because we're going to start at 7 30 actually seven o'clock I am going to send the link because we all agree we're going to start 7 p.m. tomorrow, central time. Uh, thanks again for being here with me. How do we sign up for class? Well, you can go to our website, learndispatchtoday.com, and we have all the schedule there, all upcoming classes. Do not hesitate to contact us. You also can... Uh, text me. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, and TikTok. Subscribe to our website. Black Friday is coming, so we're going to think about some special pricing. But um, can you please email your freight weight formula to your students? Yes, my students are getting this today, even my previous students, because I've been trying to make this video for the long time. So I think it's going to be helpful for everybody to have this PDF. So yes, all of you are getting this. 
my assistant will email you tomorrow this PDF and make sure you know what it is, floor loaded potatoes. What else can be floor loaded? Well, it's not only produce. So let's, since we have a few more minutes, because you know what? I was, I'm used to going over an hour, so I, I still have energy, right? So let's talk about palletized floor loaded, right? What can be floor loaded? Furniture can be floor loaded. So if you asking, if I was Alpha asking somebody, well, um, this is going to be floor loaded furniture. As a dispatcher, what do you need to ask? Well, how are we going to be securing this load? Do we need to have e tracks Do we need to have straps, right? Because if it's floor loaded, guys, you don't want to have liability of having cargo claim. So every time I hear floor loaded, I do not like it because I am teaching you in my class that the good dispatcher it's not only dispatcher who gets the best load, right? The pain load. The good dispatcher, pro dispatcher, is the one who is going to prevent cargo claims. And cargo claims come from what? Well, they come from damaging the goods, right? So if your driver did not secure or it was impossible to secure, of course, you are facing big chance of cargo claim claims can come due to what rejection because maybe jose forgot that i told him don't ever take those onions invented when in the winter from october 1st to april 31st he forgot and he booked that load now he has a rejection of his onions due to what because they got frozen right is that a good decision? No. Yes, they paid him extra $500, but now he's facing 68,000 in what? In claim. And here is the thing. Now, do you think that insurance is going to cover for you? Not really, because now we're talking about human arrow. Who did that arrow? Well, dispatcher, because dispatcher sent their own equipment during the winter months to Idaho to take the onions and go through those uh, that snow and the minus degrees. So whose arrow is this? Let's say Jose. And Jose knows I have to pick on somebody because, you know, I cannot just use my name all the time, right? So now he's facing claim and he has to pay from his own money. What else we have? Cargo liability. Before we close those doors, and that's what we're going to be covering in our class, second class, we're going to learn everything about equipment. What are we going to do? I see I have Taras here, and he's the owner of the company. He wants to make sure that he has a policy that every driver is going to take picture of the, uh, of the commodities, of all the pallets before they close the doors. Why? So we have a proof that we secure the load. And a lot of times, as an owner of the company, as a dispatcher, you can see that, well, we need some airbags because sometimes driver is too busy or he's sleepy or maybe he's just not that qualified driver. He doesn't care because you're paying him by uh, per mile anyway. Right now, it's a shortage of the driver, qualified drivers. So some drivers do not do their job. So if you're going to have policy in your company that they need to send you picture, guys, you're going to save thousands, thousands of dollars, and you're going to prevent cargo claims, right? Because again, whose fault is it going to be if you did not secure the load? And a lot of times we have a big fight between shippers and receivers because they do not let our drivers on the dock. So in this case, as a dispatcher, what do you have to do? Well, you have to contact broker and you have to say, unfortunately, they did not let us go on the dock. So they put the seal, put it in writing, put it in writing. So at least you have the proof that you told the broker 
that they close the doors, they put the seal. So now you have a chance to fight against the claim. Okay? So knock on the wood wall. Yes, Jose, I mean, <laughs> I know you're not going to do it because you're going to remember this. Sorry that I had to pick you. Any other questions so far? Well, spot market's going to change soon. Why spot market is going to cha uh, cha change uh, soon? Because holidays are coming, right? Winter is coming. So we're going to see the uh, spot market go up due to holiday. Black Friday, we all love to shop. Christmas is coming. Thanksgiving, some loads going to go up. Apples are starting to ship again, right? So Washington start paying. California, Amazon, and all those uh, mails, right? FedEx, UPS. So we're going to see spot market. And what is a spot market? It's a higher market due to certain circumstances, right? Well, I love you all. I hope you enjoy watching my trainings. I really want to make sure you guys put the likes under every video we put there because that's what gives me energy to keep going. We are growing. We are getting stronger. And with every class, I am finding those shining stars and the people who really want to change tracking for better. I'll see all of my students tomorrow for mentorship. Everybody else I'm going to see on Saturday. And a freight brokerage, I'll see you on Sunday. Love you all. And we'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Subscribe. Next dispatch coming up. And thank you for being here with us.